go ahead and ask you guys where you are each tuning in from. Um, I'm going to ask that you guys go ahead and share this Zoom link. Uh, share this live stream. Today, we have some very special guests, people that are very privy um, to this financial education that we are about to uh, to show you guys and broadcast to today. And, uh, and we have some real powerhouses that are inside the building. So in honor of the guests that we have on here today, ladies and gentlemen, help me get out this Zoom link. I need you guys to put it in your chat rooms, put it in your chat boxes, put it on your social media, Put it in your stories, put it on your Facebook groups, family, put it everywhere. Help us continue to get the reach out um, to all the lovely individuals that are part of this 25 days of free giving. Um, so in the meantime, we're going to quickly ask, where is everybody tuning in from? Um, guys, let us know where you guys are tuning in from as we get ready to kick off the 25 days of giving. We would love to see where the people are from. I see we have... Um, out in India, kingdom of Les Lesotho, we have Sweden, Dallas, Germany, Australia, Las Vegas, Clearwater, Spain, Austria, Richmond, VA, uh, more India, Romania, I believe this is the first time, glad to have you here with us, Dallas, Ghana, Kentucky, Kentucky, Phoenix, Port Charlotte, Florida, Switzerland, Germany, Cyprus, Belgium, um, as you guys can see, we have people tuning in from all across the globe, um, and we are so excited to be able to be here. So uh, what I want to be able to do quickly here is uh, we're going to uh, quickly introduce you guys each for those of you that this is your first time on the 25 days of giving. So if this is your first time here, we want to welcome you. So what exactly is the 25 days of giving? Well, this is going to be a live call series that is broadcasted and hosted by our company, I Am Mastery Academy. And we're going to be featuring um, various educators from multiple of our academies, teaching you strategies and tactics that you guys can use and leverage to end your 2022 strong and getting ready to go into a powerful 2022. 23. We want to help everybody have a new outlook, have new goals, have a new philosophy in this 2023. Because as we know, this is the type of skill set, this is the type of information that can quite literally set us apart from the rest of the individuals that are out there. So we're very excited to continue to give out this information. Now, how often are these calls going to be? Well, these calls are every single Sunday through Thursday, and it's going to be now until December 22nd, and today officially marks the last day of week two for the 25 days of giving. Now, where are these calls going to be hosted and broadcasted? Well, um, they'll be broadcasted right here on our official Zoom link and also um, on our official YouTube channel. So in order to get access to this Zoom link, right? You can simply share this Zoom link right here. I am Academy official, right? Password, I am. Don't forget to give out the password. Password is I am to be able to get uh, anybody that you would like to know more about Web3, more about NFTs, or more about what our company offers and all the free strategy education that we're providing. <clears throat> Uh, pardon me, you can get on that Zoom link there. And we will also be broadcasting this live on our YouTube channel, right? So if we come over here, you guys can officially also get connected with us um, right here on YouTube. And by connecting with us, thank you, by connecting with us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that notification bell. So that way you can stay up to date with all the amazing videos, convention recaps, as well as keep up and get all the recording for all of the amazing education that we're giving out over here as well. So as we get here to the and live by connecting link, with us right here you. goes our live link for the 25 days of giving. And you guys can feel free to share that on your Instagrams and share that on your Facebook pages as well. So we really commend and thank everybody for doing that. Now, if you guys want to stay more tapped in with I Am Mastery Academy and you guys want to stay up to date with the 25 days of giving, don't forget, you can also get connected with us um, on our official Instagram at immastery.academy. Go ahead, give us a follow. We're posting lots of stories every day, lots of recaps, and you'll get lots of information of upcoming conventions, um, strategies, packages, as well as just hearing from amazing speakers 
a part of our academy. And if you guys are on Telegram, don't forget to connect with us at I Am Academy Official, where you'll be able to stay up to date with all of the official news and updates brought to you by I Am Mastery Academy. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So as we get ready, um, I'm going to uh, edify our speaker and a little bit more about our academy and the education Then I will officially pass the call off. All right, so first off, how many of you guys can be extremely excited for today? I want you guys to go ahead and put a 777 for me um, inside the chat box. So today's uh, final day of the 25 Days of Giving Week 2, we're going to have Mr. Maurice Summers and also one of our Chairman 750s, Mr. Jason Brown. And now a little bit about these individuals. I'll tell you a little bit about Maurice Summers. Uh, Maurice Summers is an individual. He's a chairman here with IM Master Academy. He travels, he tours the entire world, um, building out this business, helping to bring this information to the masses, the information that's not normally taught in the school system. You know, Maurice believes in liberation. He believes in entrepreneurship, and he has helped quite literally thousands of people, not just from Germany, um, but from all across the globe. He's a phen phenomenal speaker um, and also team leader. Now, Maurice has also had a very huge passion for the NFT marketplace. Uh, he got his education within the DCX Academy. And by doing so, by applying the education that he has learned here, um, he has learned to learn how to look at tokenomics, how to look at the NFTs, how to do the research. And he has become a product of the product. He has helped several people on his team also get positioned with NFTs, with digital arts, and also more information about Web3. Now, for those of you guys that do not know about digital education, about Web3, about NFTs, they're going to tell you all about it. But let me be the first to let you guys know that there is a change going on in our economy. There is a change to the information curve. There is a change to access to information. And right now, this laptop, this computer, these phones connect us digitally to the entire world. More people are becoming entrepreneurs through the digital space. More people are becoming educated and certified through the digital space. And if you look up the statistics of individuals that are becoming highly successful, you'll notice that most of them, over 80% of them are doing it through the digital space. So uh, today you guys are going to learn a lot more about digital education, Web3, NFTs. It's going to be a phenomenal free class. So free show, make sure you have your pens, your notebooks. So without further ado, I would like to give it up to the man of the hour, uh, Mr. Maurice Summers. So Maurice, are you with us, brother? I'm here. I'm here, brother. Thank you so much for the introduction. I'm excited for this call today. Thank you so much for being here. Um, the floor is yours. All right, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Manny. All right, guys. Uh, welcome to this call today, to this live stream. Um, I saw we have people from all over the world here, from all over Europe, uh, different countries. It's exciting to see all of you here on this call, um, even on, on Zoom or on YouTube. And yeah, like many already said, I'm going to show you today together with uh, Jason Brown how um, or not, not, not how, but everything about Web3 and especially also NFTs. And maybe some of you already know a little bit about NFTs. Maybe you have heard about it, especially last year when there was a lot of, I would hype, I would say a lot of people were speaking about it, right? It was in, um, in, in the mouths of, of everyone almost. But then something happened and that was the beer market in crypto. And th this is what happens. And this is what is something that when you're educated like that's what we are doing here right we're educating people so when you get education you can handle situations like the current situation for example where the crypto markets are not at their all-time high right where they are not um uh, where, where crypto like bitcoin ethereum and all the other coins and also nfts are not at that level where they have been before right but this is completely normal and then when you when it comes to education you understand how important those situations are because when it's the all-time high that's not the time for you to buy that's what people do who don't be educated right people who are not educated they they buy the the top and they sell the low because they, they don't have education. They don't know how to deal with emotions and with, with all of that, right? And this is what we are doing here with I'm Mastery Academy. I'm part of this company now for over uh, five years. Like many said, I'm also building the business, but I became an educator 
a, a few months ago, I would say two months, something like that, with the topic of NFTs, because I'm I'm really deep into that now for the last more than one and a half years, um, because the things that I'm going to show you right now, I have a presentation for you guys where I'm going to show you everything about um, NFTs, about Web3, about today's topic. And I'm really, really excited to show you all of that. So um, like you just heard, you heard a little bit of, of myself. I'm 26 years young. And uh, like I said, five years in the company now and teaching NFTs officially, like I said, for like two months, something like this. But even before when I was on tour, I was always speaking about the topic with NFTs and Web3. Why? Because I believe that this is, and many said it already before, there is a change going on at the moment. And most people are not aware of those changes because they're, they're happening in the background, right? Most people don't realize what is going on. And you're going to see as soon as I'm going to explain you, you hear the word, the word Web3 all the time. I'm going to explain you what the difference is between Web1, Web2, and Web3. But before we going into that, um, the first topic is what is an NFT? And it it could be one thing that I just explain you and tell you some things, but I found a great, great video, which I think is really worth it paying a lot of attention to, because after you have seen that video, after those three, four minutes, you really understand what NFTs are and you really understand how they are working and why they will affect the world in the future, even more than they're doing it right now, but they're already doing it. So please give attention to the next three to four minutes to really understand that um, the topic and really understand NFTs. Uh, let me let me just do one thing. I want to make sure that you have a good audio. So I'm going to do it like that, and then it will be even better. So I'm going to be back in three, four minutes. But now, please give a lot of attention to this video. Meet Susan, an aspiring painter. She wishes to conduct an online painting exhibition for all her digital artworks. However, as the exhibition is online, she is worried that her paintings won't be secure as anyone could easily forge or replicate them. Her friend Mark came to her rescue with an idea of NFT. He suggested that Susan could buy NFTs for all her paintings as NFTs are trustworthy, easily transferable, and will also maintain her ownership rights on her artworks. Susan had no idea what NFTs were, so Mark stepped ahead and explained it to her. NFTs turn your digital assets into one of a kind by creating a unique digital signature, which defines the ownership of your assets and that can be bought and sold for real money, cryptocurrency, or any other asset, like a non-fungible token, aka NFT. Non-fungible tokens means that they are not interchangeable, and each of them represents unique assets owned by a specific person. On the other hand, fungible tokens are interchangeable and can be divided into smaller units to form the same value. For example, a $100 bill is fungible, as you can exchange it with five $20 bills or two $50 bills. But the painting of The Last Supper is non-fungible, as it cannot be generated in bulk. Even if it is copied, it will not be authentic. Each NFT contains distinguishable information like who owns the digital asset and who sold it, making them distinct and easily verifiable. As it is impossible to forge such a certificate, it will secure her painting's originality. After learning what NFT is, Susan was curious to know how exactly NFT works. NFT basically creates a blockchain-based digital certificate for your digital collectibles, including games, music, art, and many more. This certificate gives your artwork a unique identity. The underlying technology and the programming language used by NFTs are the same as other cryptocurrencies, such as blockchain and the programming language Ethash, or Script. NFT majorly exists on Ethereum blockchain, a distributed public ledger that records all the transactions. However, NFT is quite different from these cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin and Ethereum are fungible tokens, which means if you trade Bitcoin or Ethereum for one another, you will have the same value or item in return, basically money. On the other hand, NFT is a unique token. Therefore, if you try to trade it, you may end up with something completely different in your hands. CryptoPunks is a remarkable example of NFT. It enables you to buy, sell, and store 10,000 collectibles with the proof of ownership being stored on the Ethereum blockchain. After exploring how NFTs work, 
Susan was convinced and bought NFTs for all her paintings. Due to this, her artworks were secured from any kind of forgery and also gave her artworks a particular value. This contributed to increased sales too, as everyone was easily able to buy the artwork without any fear. All in all, her exhibition was a complete success. Similarly, NFT has proved itself to be a boon in the lives of many others, like Jack Dorsey, the CEO and co-founder of Twitter with his very first and famous tweet, just setting up my Twitter, and Vignesh Sundarasan, famously known as Metacoven, who bought $69.3 million worth of NFT art on Beeple. Owing to its increasing popularity, people are now willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for NFTs. NFT has enhanced media exposure and special perks for aspiring artists like Susan on social media. This popularity of NFT creates new opportunities for new art platforms, motivating people to buy art from internet platforms and promoting copyright or originality of digital assets. All right, so, guys. So I just believe that with that video and with all of the graphics, you have a way better understanding of the topic of NFTs. And I'm 100% sure that most of you now understand the topic uh, even better. I'm currently also, oops, let me, let me do one thing here. Uh, I want to move this one over here. Um, I'm currently wor working also on this one uh, from myself on English. I have it in German already. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I believe that with the graphics and everything, it's way better to understand. Because like I said at the beginning also, it's such a new topic. And people, um, most of the time when there's something new and people don't understand something, they don't want to pay too much attention to it because they don't even know why they should pay attention on it. And this is exactly what I want to change today. I want you to really understand the topic so you understand for yourself why you should pay attention into NFTs, into Web3. So explaining Web3, what is it? Web one is what everyone knows. This is the beginning of the internet. You see all those companies here. You see Amazon, Yahoo, Google, and all of that, right? This is like the beginning, like I said, the beginning of the internet where you had the ability to go into the internet, to search for stuff and to read, 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 and get information. But you, you couldn't say something on it. You couldn't, you couldn't go on Instagram and do an Instagram live and then invite some people and then start a discussion and then speak with them publicly um, about a topic. You couldn't do that. You couldn't open a, a Twitter space where you can start, uh, where you could start talking to people or making a thread on Twitter, right? And, 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 and they're discussing or speaking with people. All of that wasn't possible. All of that came with Web2. Web2 gave us the opportunity to be a creator. It gave us, it gave us the, the opportunity to finally also have a voice and speak up and say something about what you're thinking. So this is what Web2 was. It was read and write, create. And then what is, what is actually created right now is Web3. And what Web3 is, is it gives you the opportunity to own digital assets. And now you may be thinking like, okay, but why should I want a digital asset? Trust me, you want digital assets. And even if you don't want them right now, you're going to want them in the future. Because I give you a, a little example. Like when Facebook came out, which is like, I don't know, more than 12, 13 years ago, uh, when I uh, uh, used Facebook for the first time, it was it's out definitely way longer but when i used facebook for the first time it's like 12 13 years ago right so i was like i don't know 14 years ago 12 years old something like this so my mom told me i'm not allowed to use facebook now what 14 years later i don't want to use facebook but my mom uses facebook right so things are changing and you need to understand that even if you think right now that you don't want to own digital collectibles or digital assets there is so many people out there who want that especially for example 10 to 15 year olds and now you're thinking what why should that matter what 10 to 15 year olds want i tell you because in 5 to 10 years this is the market that's the people who are then 15 to 20 years young Right. And then this is the market. And when they understand the digital assets, when they understand why it matters to own digital assets, then it will also matter to you. It doesn't. It, that, that's just facts. And it's going to happen. But most people are not aware of this change that is happening right now because they're they're focused too much on what is 
on what, what is happening in the mainstream, right? But you got to pay attention to what is happening in the background. So Web3 gives you the opportunity to own digital assets. And digital assets, for example, is also a blue check on Instagram. That's, for example, a digital asset. And it matters to you. When you see your Instagram profile and it has a blue check there, it matters to you. You automatically trust that person more, more. You automatically give more attention to that profile because there is that blue check. And we're going to get back to that topic later when we're going to speak about IP brand building. But here is the five topics that I want to speak about with you guys uh, today. And the first one that I want to speak about is digital certificates. So what's a digital certificate? That's basically what an NFT is. An NFT is a digital certificate. So there's a few different ways of what it can certify. It can be a proof of manufacture. So for example, there's expensive machineries and also there's a... Um, it's like those, those spare things that you need for them, right? So you need certificates to as a, as a big company to be sure that this is 100% legit. And this is, for example, what NFTs will do in the future. It's definitely going to uh, combating uh, product piracy. Because, for example, you're going to... Um, I've, I've made a, a few notes on that. So you have, for example, where and who produced the expensive watch, which is definitely extremely important um, because there's a lot of, of, of pri uh, product piracy when it comes to especially things like that, right? Then you have digital IDs, which is one of the things that will happen sooner than you probably think. I was in Sweden a lot of times in the past couple of months and uh, also in the past couple of years, one or two years. And in Sweden already, people have digital IDs. So there it's completely normal to have a digital ID and not having your ID as a, as a card, right? So for us in, in Europe, for me in Germany, for example, Austria, wherever, it's, it's not normal. No one has their ID as a, in a digital form, right? Everyone has it in, in, in like physics. So this is definitely something that is changing really, really fast. You have digital license proof um, for uh, which is NFTs, what they're going to, going to do and hatching of financial uh, transfers like uh, property, for example, or also companies. So this is all stuff that NFTs will do in the future. But then we come to IP brand building. And this is for me, one of the most exciting things that NFTs are going to do. So maybe one of you or some of you have already seen those, those apes. This is besides CryptoPunks, the most expensive project that exists right now in NFTs. And it's from Board Ape Yacht Club. And the company behind it is Yuga Labs. And what, what people here are doing with Board and Hungry and with that M&M collaboration is people who actually own that asset, people who own those apes that you're seeing like on the, on the French fries, or on the burger, the drinks, or on the M&Ms, those people decided to use that IP, that intellectual property, to build a brand around it. So they went, for example, to build more than hungry there. And then you have people uh, who did that with M&Ms and they reached out to M&Ms and did that with m and It was not the company behind it. It was not Board AB Art Club or Yuga Labs. It was the people who are owning those assets. So why are people doing that? Because in the future, and this is what Yuga Labs, for example, is working on with those apes, is that as soon as you see those apes, the same thing happens in your brain, like when you see a blue check on Instagram, for example, or when you see brands like Louis Vuitton, Supreme, Gucci, and all of that stuff, right? As soon as you see that, something happens in your brain. And Board Ape Yacht Club, the company behind it, they are working on that people all over the, uh, all over the world know about those brands. They know about board apes. They know those apes and they get that feeling. So you can use that asset and build an IP brand around it. And that, that is for me, one of the most exciting things when it comes to, to NFTs. And then there are th uh, three more topics that are really important and really game-changing 
um, for the world. And the first thing is royalties. And the reason why ro royalties will be so crazy for NFTs, and this is one of the reasons why NFTs will matter in the future, is because it gives companies the opportunity to build a residual income. So what also what we are doing here with iMastery Academy is we're giving people the opportunity to be an IBO, to be an in, uh, independent business owner, and to build up a residual income. And this is the same thing what companies are doing in the future with the help of NFTs. Luxury brands, for example, like Rolex, could easily say in the future, hey, whenever we give out a new watch, from now on, it's going to be attached to an NFT. So this NFT proves that you're the, the, the owner of that watch. And if you want to sell the watch, you got to sell the NFT. What happens then is that Rolex, on every single purchase, on every sale on the secondary market, where at the moment they are not earning anything, they're not earning a dollar from it, they now could earn like 5%, for example, with every sale that is happening on the secondary markets. Same thing with sneakers, like Nike and Adidas, they're not making any dollars on secondary market. But in the future, with digital assets, it will be different. Because now maybe you think like, yeah, but for what do I need a digital shoe? You're going to need it because you want to look cool in GTA 7, for example, or in other games in the future where you can rock the, the digital Nike or Adidas shoes, just as an example. And if it's not you who are interested in that, trust me, there's a lot of people out there who are, and you can take advantage of that. Flight tickets, even things like that will be an NFT in the, in, the, in, in the future. Music artists have such a big advantage because they don't need labels anymore. They can set up the NFT, which funds them, so they don't need the label behind it. And then when, as soon as the album comes out with the label, they're just earning $1 or whatever on the album sale, which is not much. When they don't have a label, but they set up the NFT, so they, they still get the funding um, in advance to do all of the promo and the videos and all of that stuff, that's gonna be game changing for the music industry. What you know now as a music box is gonna be an NFT in the future. And then also, especially for artists, like you have seen in the video already, um, it's, it's gonna be amazing. And then there's, like I said, two more things. It's utility and gaming. With utility, we have things like airdrops, assets that you're getting. Um, so you getting, for example, as a holder, from specific NFTs, you're getting additional assets because you're a holder. And this is one of the things or one of the reasons why people are holding to their NFTs because they're getting more and more and more assets in the future um, as, a, um, as a reward. That's the word I was looking for, as a reward. And then we have events like the, the VCon from Gary Vaynerchuk, for example. There's a, a convention by Gary Vaynerchuk once a year, and you get access to it by owning one of his VFriends NFTs. There's a restaurant in Miami where you only have access when you own the NFT from that restaurant. And they're already expanding and building restaurants all over the world in all of the major cities because it's such a successful project. And then we have customer experience where there's so much stuff that we could speak about, but we don't have the time for that. But especially customer experience and what companies being able to in the future, to, to if they use the, the advantage of they have with Web3, with uh, proof of ownership, with the blockchain, there's going to be so much crazy customer experience that companies can create in the future. It's exciting. And then last but not least, we have gaming, where we have two things, play to earn and digital ownership. So play to earn is what brought me into NFTs. It gives you the opportunity to earn money while you're playing. So for me, one thing was clear straight. In the future, when there is a Call of Duty, for example, which looks exactly the same, but it's from a different company, but it's play to earn with crypto coins and everything, but it looks the same. Why should you play Call of Duty anymore where you're not owning uh, any money or not earning any money when you could play a game that looks exactly the same, but there you earn money while playing it, right? So this is what really got my attention. And this is what brought me into NFTs because I understood that this is the future of gaming and especially digital ownership. Speaking about Fortnite skins, for example, if the company behind it is, is gone, if Epic Games is gone for whatever reason, people who spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on their Fortnite skins, 
they're not being able to use them anymore because the company is gone. And what NFTs are doing is for the future, and that, that's in, in my opinion, the big games in the future that are going to be successful, where you can use NFTs across different platforms, across different games, and where you can uh, take your NFT from one game to the other. This is definitely revolutionary for the gaming industry. So yeah, guys, this is what we are talking about in our go live sessions, but not just those things which are kind of there to explain you a little bit more what NFTs are all about. Um, we especially going into Ethereum, in the, into the Ethereum markets. Jason Brown is always doing that, who's also already on the session. He's going to speak in one or two minutes. And uh, also what we're doing is we going over the NFT market. So we're going into the marketplaces. We go on OpenSea, which is for those of you who don't know, like the eBay of NFTs. It's just a the biggest marketplace at the moment. So we go on at OpenSea, for example, we speak about new projects, we speak about what's going on at the moment, we speak about announcements, airdrops, everything that is important in the Web3 and NFT space. So this is happening every single Tuesday together. Jason and I are um, live at, like you can see, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, which is 8 p.m. In, in Central Europe time, where we have NF Tuesdays. Jason has his session every Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I do have my English sessions on Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, 7 p.m. Central Europe. And also, I want to give a big, big shout out to the DCX Roundtable, which is happening every single Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard, 10 p.m. Central Europe. Guys, don't miss out on the DCX roundtable because you're going to have all of your favorite educators in one session and everyone speaks for about five to 10 minutes. So you get the best of the best and all the most important informations, everything in one session. That's crazy guys. So definitely don't miss out on that one. And now I'm really, really excited guys to bring up here on this call, a very special person that you can see here on this flyer with that being said, thank you from my side. And now we have Mr. Jason Brown here on this Zoom already. Brother, how are you? I hope you're doing amazing. I know you had a busy, busy day. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited you made it. Yeah, man. Uh, excited to be here. Thank you, Maurice. Thank you, Manny. And uh, thank you, I am for putting together a platform that, uh, you know, that can really feed uh, the next wave of, you know, learners, uh, the next wave of people getting educated and uh, the, the, the loyal people uh, that are here in this company to learn and to grow. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really excited about this because, um, you know, I've been, a, I've been involved in this company since November of 2015. So uh, we're talking about seven years uh, just two weeks ago, it was seven years in this, in this company. And I started off as a customer, right? I wanted to learn about trading. I wanted to learn about, you know, the markets and, and there was nothing really out there that made sense. Right. I, I, uh, talked to some different people at that time, you know, even Forex and stuff was kind of like low key. Uh, not a lot of people were trading, um, crypto at all. But, you know, my friend in Nigeria had told me about Bitcoin. Bitcoin was about 500 bucks at the time. And again, without education, you don't understand anything. So it went in one ear and out the other. And then we found, you know, we found I am. And I said, you know what? I really think that um, it would be great to learn from a guy like Chris Terry and be a part of a company with someone like him that has the experience, has time and tenure. Um, in, in stocks and, you know, futures and all this stuff. And so, you know, seven years later, uh, it's, it's amazing that, you know, cryptocurrency uh, took over for me. Um, it became something that is my passion. And then uh, earlier this year in, I want to say January, uh, so almost one year ago, um, I made a pivot to get into NFTs. And, you know, up until that time, I actually thought NFTs were really uh, stupid, right? People were talking about NFTs and you got to get into NFTs and I'm seeing these pictures and, and I'm like, dude, this makes no sense. Like it, it, it makes absolutely zero sense. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. 
Well, you know, one of my friends and I were involved in in a project in crypto that didn't pan out the way we wanted it to. And um, like we weren't on the team, but we were investing in it and, you know, didn't really go the way that we wanted. And so I was kind of like, man, I was kind of burnt out. Uh, I lost some money at that time. And, you know, I was still doing okay. I was uh, an educator on the platform and doing good on that side. But I was like, man, I need something that like I, that, that fires me up, like something that gets me excited um, because crypto is cool. And I like crypto. Don't get me wrong. I love doing analysis, but you know, for me, I love the community. I love networking. I love meeting people. And, you know, when I saw NFTs as from a different light, right. From a different angle, I was like, oh my, this makes so much sense. In fact, this could actually be for collectors, a much better option than just sitting on a token and looking at it in your Coinbase wallet and seeing if it went up or down, right? Like, okay, that's pretty much the excitement. Like you talk to your friend, like, yo, Manny, did you see Bitcoin went down today? Yeah, bro. Cool. Like that's, it's pretty much all you're talking about. And so my friend showed me some NFT projects and I said, okay, I'm going to get this one. Okay. I'm going to get this one. And, and, you know, lo and behold, pretty much all my crypto went into NFTs very quickly and it just became a passion for me, right? Like I, I, I just love collecting. And if you've loved collecting, like I think back to when I was younger, right? It was, it was collecting um, Beanie Babies at one point or Pokemon cards or Pogs or Legos. Um, I remember I used to collect all these little pirate action figures. Like I was tech decks, right? The little skateboards, the little uh, uh, bikes that they had, the little trick bikes with the little ramp. And, you know, I would always bring my tech decks. I had a little carrying case. I would always bring it to school and my friends had it. We would trade. And so whether it was that or, you know, uh, again, like Pokemon was so big when I was in probably like second grade, third grade, first grade. Like I remember in summer camp, there was like three years in a row where in summer camp, Pokemon was just, that's all we did. And, uh, there was like 20, 30 people and we would all like trade and coerce our parents into stopping to get packs on the way home. And, you know, brings back a lot of nostalgia of, you know, my youth and, and for a lot of people, right. I mean, the next generation, Maurice, a little bit younger than I, so probably Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, and now Hearthstone is one of the biggest and, you know, this, this digital collectible idea, <laughs> Leah's like, I was that parent, right. Getting begged, like, mom, please, like, you don't understand, like, please get this pack for me, please. And then you show up to get the pack and nobody has them. They're like impossible to find. I mean, um, that that was the nostalgia for me. And yes, Pokemon Go, that was the zombie apocalypse of like 2018, 17, whatever. Like everybody's just walking around looking at their phones, like walking across the street, not looking, trying to catch, you know, this Pokemon. So, you know, this, this idea, and obviously you guys can see, this is literally what you can see is like 15% of my office. Um, and I just have a ton of collectibles. I've got memorabilia, autographs, bobbleheads, Yankee bobbleheads behind me, you know, Jordan uh, basketball. I've got some Kobe stuff, a whole nother Yankees, Titans. I got a ton of collectibles. And so, you know, when I saw NFTs, I was like, wait a minute. So the idea of collectibles has gone from generation to generation to generation to generation to generation. And if collectibles are something that we obviously see as important, yes, that is that is a board ape. It's my board ape. Um, if we see that collectibles are important, right? Then why wouldn't digital collectibles be the the bridge to the future of collectibles? Because everything is digital, right? We're on our phones. We are. Uh, on Zoom right now, you guys are home, right? We're doing go live. We're learning about financial markets and, and strategies and ideas from the comfort of any device and Wi-Fi. And like Maurice touched on this in his presentation, but the idea of building brands became so important to me because it's something that I've always wanted to do. And so 
when you look at NFTs as digital collectibles, but then you also look at the idea of building a brand and owning a part of that brand, you basically become a fractional partner of that brand. And so it attracted me to this space in such a big way. And, you know, uh, I, I literally went into like this cave, right? I went into this, uh, you know, this, this bubble and I said, okay, I need to understand Web3. I need to understand this digital collectible space at such a level that I can come to IM and I can teach because I was teaching crypto, but so were 15 other educators. And then Maurice was like, hey, I'm doing NFTs as well. We were already great friends, always had a phenomenal relationship. And most people think we're related like brothers because, you know, we kind of have the same beard, same complexion, all that stuff, right? Uh, I mean, if I had glasses and a beanie hat on, it'd be a lock, right? So, you know, we already had the, the friendship and, and then, you know, I didn't really have a lot of friends that were doing NFTs. So him and I were kind of bouncing ideas. He had this rarity tool um, that was like helping us find like the right entries and, and like what's a good buy, what's overpriced. And so then NFTs became a lot more strategic and we found passion over the same projects because we're very analytical. We do our due diligence and we're not just like wasting money, throwing money around in the space because in order to be educators, we have to be responsible, A, and we need results, B. Um, so we're not giving financial advice, right? But at the end of the day, if we're, if we're educating and we're being an example, a role model, then we have to be the greatest role models. And that's kind of our philosophy. And so, you know, our go live sessions uh, are really fun. We have every Tuesday, um, which you guys obviously missed this week if you weren't there, but we have a lot of people showing up and, you know, we're like seven or eight weeks in and they're just, they're just loving it and, and really starting to understand the, the, the process of NFTs. We're not pushing projects down their throat. We're not saying, hey, go buy this. But what we are doing is, it, doing is analyzing projects that have been stable, analyzing, analyzing projects that have, you know, good volume, good capacity, good branding, um, a real vision, a real business plan. And then the consumer, you know, the customer says, hey, I like that art. I like this. And you do whatever it is that you want. And that, that's the most beautiful part of it. Um, is that we don't get paid to promote projects. We're not affiliated with any projects, but we are invested in stuff. And what we're invested in, we've done our dive deeps. We've done our you know, due diligence. We've talked to the teams, all that stuff. So we're having a lot of fun because now we're just talking about you know, a, 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 a world that we love. Now, you guys have also heard this buzzword, metaverse, metaverse, metaverse. Well, NFTs are really the... I wouldn't say the governing body of the metaverse, but they are the visual aspect of the metaverse, right? So di different metaverses, for example, you can go and buy a building, buy an apartment, buy a city, right? You own this plot of land and it, it resembles almost like in Grand Theft Auto, if you owned a building, right? And every time somebody went, you know, maybe you made money off of, you know, the token in the game or whatever, right? And I'm not saying you could earn passive income by owning something, but the idea is, is digital ownership, but also the avatar, right? So like Yuga Labs, Board Ape Yacht Club, the reason why I have one is because it is digital identification, right? The, the, the profile picture, obviously everything in Web3 is, is on Twitter. And, you know, when you have specific thing as your profile picture, that becomes your digital identity. So people don't know who I am. I had to operate off of, of like a, almost like a gamer tag, right? So I don't, I'm not Jason Brown on Twitter. If you search Jason Brown, you're not going to find me on Twitter. I haven't had a Twitter in a long time, but my digital persona has a Twitter. And, and it's been amazing because, you know, that board ape has become my digital identity. Uh, for that persona on Twitter. And it's really fun, you know? So, um, you know, I think today for the sake of what we're doing here, uh, the sake of time and, and also just for the sake of simplicity, 
I don't think today we look at any projects. I don't think today we really get into any of the nitty gritty. Um, I believe that our go live sessions always talk about a few things that can really help you. Um, number one, we always look at the Ethereum total market cap and Bitcoin um, charts and just look at what the economy is doing. I, what I call the crypto economy, right? Total market cap, all the money that's in crypto. Ethereum versus US dollar, Bitcoin versus US dollar. And then we'll actually look at the DXY, which is the dollar index, the US dollar index. So you can always see the, the, the strength or the weakness. And we just kind of look at where the markets are at because NFTs on the Ethereum blockchain are governed by the price of Ethereum in some way, shape or form. So it's really a formula of the price of Ethereum and then the floor price of the NFT, which is the cheapest one listed in that collection. Right. So, for example, all right, I'll show you right here. We'll look at this Ethereum chart and I do the technical analysis. Um, I've, this is something that I've done for seven years. It's a huge passion of mine. We look at higher time frames. So, you know, we're looking at the weekly for the most part. I, I really like the weekly. I can read it well and it, and it trades well. It moves well. Um, sometimes in the smaller time frames, um, you're, you're in more of a, a jackrabbit uh mindset where you know if you're day trading nfts good luck um that's my advice you know that that's my personal um that's my personal testament to you good luck because nfts have royalties and it's it's not easy to flip them um in a, in a very rapid way and usually flippers um it's hard to flip your way uh, if you're impatient. So I don't see any reason why we're not looking at the weekly and monthly charts because we want people to, we want to educate people to look at NFTs as a long-term thing, right? What you're doing, the projects that I'm personally invested in are long-term. Whether the price of Ethereum went from 4,000 to 1,000, or if, even if it goes to 500, it doesn't change anything but the value, the US dollar value, the long-term equity, the long-term projection um, is, is to be a partner or be a part of this group, this culture, this brand, as it grows, you have that fraction of whatever supply they've provided. And so, for example, there's only 10,000 board apes in the world. I own one, a very rare one. So as that ecosystem does partnerships, does events, right? They, they actually, one of the things that they want to do is become like Coachella, of the web three space, right? So they have big concerts every year, massive artists. They've had Snoop Dogg, Eminem, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as people want to be a part of that exclusive group, then you would imagine if they're providing value, the, the value of the asset will grow, right? Just like Spotify, right? In the beginning, we were paying nine bucks a month for Spotify. Now it's 16 or five bucks a month for Spotify. Now it's 15, 16. As they've provided more value, the value of the membership has gone up. Same with Netflix, the value of the membership has gone up. So if you look at NFTs in that way, then I believe the price of Ethereum is important, but on a higher time frame. So we look at that, which is really, really, really important. Um, and then also what we do is we'll, we'll go through and we'll look at uh, different, let me go to like a neutral profile here. Let me create a new one. One second. I'm going to make a neutral open C so you guys don't see anything. So open C is the, uh, marketplace for Ethereum NFTs. Um, whenever you're signing something, just since I'm doing it, I'll show you. Um, and I'm going to talk about, you know, the right way, the right practices. But anyway, when you're signing something, you always want to double check the website, the origin website, OpenSea.io. Um, in case you're signing a fake contract, it's always good to do your due diligence, especially when you're new. Um, welcome to OpenSea. Click sign and accept terms. This request will not trigger a blockchain transaction, which is important, right? Because if you're on the right OpenSea, when you initially sign, it's not going to trigger anything on the blockchain. Scam websites will actually trigger something, meaning they'll take all your NFTs. So just be careful. I've never been drained, knock on wood. Um, I've never had security issues. So it's not 
um, like this crazy do or die thing where you're going to get scammed. I don't want you guys to operate in fear, but it's good to operate in diligence. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go to OpenSea on the session and we'll just look through the trending projects. Um, we'll look at, you know, on, on the Ethereum blockchain, um, view all, you know, maybe we'll look at what's been trending for the last, let's say, uh, where is it? Huh, where's the time? Well, this has given me, it's usually says a time frame, but I don't see it. Uh, so let you pick the chain and then maybe top. Let's go to top. It's probably top. There you go. Top, right? So you go to top, click 30 days. And what we'll look at is some of the projects that we're familiar with that are trending um, for the last 30 days that, you know, have the volume and we'll do like a normal analysis of that project, right? We typically stick to projects that we know, like I said, just so we're not talking blindly about something. Um, we, we never want to do that. And if we do, we'll let you know, like, hey, this is new. We're taking a look at it literally with you. Um, so, so look, um, you know, guys, one of the things that I think is really, really, really important is our resources and the resources that if you're a part of this academy, you should really be paying attention to, right? And that's your I am center, right? I am center is literally designed to be kind of an all in one thing. And when you go to go live, okay, and you scroll to DCX Academy, there's going to be a couple things here. You've got Maurice Solo, right? So he does his session Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, all about Web3. And that's his introductory, like if you're new, get on that class. They're talking about a bunch of different stuff. And that's really key. But also on his own channel, right, under favorite sessions, right, he's got Academy Basics, number one, and NFT security, which is number two. So before you do anything, if you are interested in NFTs, I would recommend you go through both of those videos. It's a little bit over two hours of content that could save you a drastic mistake in the future. Um, he's got a bunch of other recorded, all his sessions are recorded. Then you can come back here. Um, you can go through our recorded sessions together are all here. Um, number one was great. That was the introductory class. Um, you know, if you have the time and you're really, really passionate, you can go through all of them. I don't know if that's necessary. Um, but then I also do my own sessions, um, down here, uh, Ethan NFT market overview. So tomorrow, literally 24 hours from now, we'll be doing a class for about one hour uh, where I go through the market and I go through OpenSea. So we do it together on Tuesdays. I do it separate on Friday. He does it separate on Sundays. And so, you know, NFT stuff is taking place. Um, Nick Gomez has a metaverse NFT session on Monday as well. And so, uh, and so do Mike Sotero and, uh, well, Mike, Mike does the uh, research and define NFTs at 1 p.m. So there's a lot of value now with NFTs here on Go Live um, to get different parts of analysis, different uh, pieces of, of information and insight. And we're really excited. So I, I would recommend that you guys get plugged in. Like the next steps, if you really like NFTs, are to get plugged into mine and Maurice's sessions. Um, definitely tomorrow, be there if you can. I mean, I'm sure if you've made it to this, you can make it tomorrow. Um, and and NF Tuesdays, also Maurice's session. We'll get you dialed in. We'll get you right. Don't rush. Um, Web3 is new. It's not going anywhere. So you don't need to panic and, you know, go do anything. Um, but if you want, go check the recording from our dual session. Recording number one has a lot of good information that can get you started. Maurice's recorded stuff. And then you can dive as deep down the rabbit hole as you'd like from there. So Maurice, uh, thank you, man, for having me here. Very, very grateful. Manny, uh, thank you for coordinating this 25 days of giving. I think it's brilliant. Um, this has been super value driven. And I would just recommend you guys go out, let people know this is happening, share it right? There's a lot of value just in one hour packed into these calls. 
and, and it's not over yet, right? And so share this vision of the 25 days of giving. It's a lot of value that we're giving away for free. Um, and, and it'll get people excited about the Academy. So much love, guys. Happy to be here today. We'll see you on Go Live. Make sure you are there. Make sure you have DCX. Manny, back to you, my brother. Yes, thank you so much. Um, if you guys can. So first off, all right, well, Marie, stay with me. Um, all right, JB, you still are there. I know you guys just did a phenomenal job uh, promoting yourselves um, for the sessions, and that's what we usually go into. So first off, if you guys have found some value, um, over here, just go ahead, type a 777 for me inside of the chat box, especially if you're with us um, on the live stream right now. Uh, we would like to see, make sure that you guys have gotten some great education and got some great information. Um, I think JB is very thorough. He really does dive in um, and it's good. And Maurice, you know, you did a phenomenal job explaining web one, web two, um, and web three. And I really like how you brought a lot of the concepts from the real world um, to the NFT space, made it very tangible. You made it very approachable and people can see the true value um, in the web space and the NFT space. So uh, we usually ask everybody two questions um, just to get a clean understanding. So Maurice, um, what time and what days do you go live uh, for your sessions on Go Live? Uh, for my solo sessions, it's Sundays. Uh, 6 p.m. Uh, for German, or like 6 p.m. Central Europe time. So that's 12 p.m. Eastern Standard for German. And then 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, one hour later, I'm going to do my English solo session. And then together with Jason on Tuesdays, we do 2 p.m. And if Tuesday. Okay, phenomenal, phenomenal. And Jason, those are the sessions that you do with Maurice right now, or do you have additional solo sessions? Um, no, I, I have my solo session Fridays at 1 p.m. Fridays at 1 p.m. That is that Eastern time? Yes, sir. Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern. All right. Phenomenal. So make sure you guys take that down in your notes. And then I'm going to ask one more question. So, Maurice, for the students that choose to show up to your sessions, um, what can they expect to learn, you know, under your go live education and, and, and mentorship? Well, there, there's a lot of stuff. So uh, first of all, I recommend everyone, like Jason said already, to watch the uh, recorded sessions first, the academy sessions with basic and security, because everything's built on, on top of that, right? So if people don't watch those sessions before, they miss out really, really necessary information. So that's what the first thing that you're doing, because it really settles you up for everything. It gives you all of the informations that you need. And then in my weekly sessions, we're going over the market. So usually at the beginning, we're looking at OpenSea last seven days. We, we're seeing what has changed in the last seven days since the last session, right? I'm answering a lot of questions from people in the chat. And then sometimes we do different stuff. Maybe there's a, there's a new project that came out and people have a lot of questions about that project. And then we speak in a little bit more about that. Sometimes we have uh, things like people sending me their, their buys and their sales, or they're sending me their NFTs and asking me on, on my op opinion, right? So we, we do a bunch of stuff and I mainly focus on doing what people are most asking for. Very good. Thank you so much. And then uh, JB, if, if, uh, for the students or the people that would be able to tune into your solo sessions, what could they expect uh, to learn through your solo sessions? <laughs> I'm laughing. One of my friends just sent me a funny text. But um, so uh, on my sessions, we start off, um, we do about 20, 30 minutes of just straight market analysis. So really doing a deep dive on uh, total market cap, DXY, um, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Uh, mainly. And the only reason I look at Bitcoin is because it has such an influence on the crypto market in general. Um, since it's got so much visibility, sometimes what could happen with Bitcoin only can affect the market um, be just because of the way the market is so tied to it at this moment. So we look at that for the most part, um, spend about 20, 25 minutes doing a nice deep dive into that. And then we'll jump over to OpenSea um, and, and look at projects um, look at some of the floors, look at the ana analytics that are provided uh, by OpenSea, but we'll just analyze kind of the movement, the volume, the, you know, the, what's going on. And we'll look at actually the fundamentals as well. Um, and just talk about current market conditions, answer some questions. Um, but but it's, it's a really just a, a, a one-two punch of, hey, here's what's going on. 
in this market. And then, um, you know, here's the, uh, here's, here's what's going on in, in the NFT market. All right. That sounds good. So gentlemen, thank you so much. I'm going to get ready to close out the session and show people how they can get access um, to the DCX. We want to thank you guys so much. I am Master Academy. Thank you guys for the education and mentorship that you guys bring to the platform. Um, and happy holidays to you, gentlemen. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank phenomenal. You. Phenomenal. Okay. So now uh, for those of you, ladies and gentlemen, that are here with us, um, as we get ready to wrap up today's 25 days of giving, we're going to close out with some of our final announcements uh, for the day. So again, for those of you that are currently member uh, guests and you have just showed up, you was invited to maybe this live stream or to this Zoom. If you want to, if you are interested in the NFT, the BTC space, the Web3 space, and you want to get yourself more acclimated, get yourself more educated in this space, but not have to pay 10 tens of thousands of dollars for single one-off courses, but get a full robust academy and live mentorship from the DCX team that is here. You guys can simply just get back to the person that referred you to this live stream. They'll get you connected with a coach, get your questions answered and help you get started. Now, for those of you that are a part of the um, I, am, uh, I Am Academy, if you guys want to be able to access the DCX package, I want to remind you guys that the I Am Power Bundle is now live. You guys can go to your back office for a few dollars more. You guys can upgrade and add on the DCX package to your current package. This is a phenomenal package here for the fact that you could really allow yourself to get educated up until the next Bitcoin halving when Bitcoin is expected to go next to that big boom. Now, we have been here. We've been educating through each of the Bitcoin booms, and they have been phenomenal. They've yielded great, great um um, great things in the market and with our students, great testimonials as well. So this would be a really perfect time while the Bitcoin market, the NFT market is simmering um, to be able to get yourself involved and in position. Okay, so feel free to upgrade to I Am Powered for a few dollars more, add DCX on for your second educational package. And don't forget for when you add on I Am Empowered, you also get MMX free, not for 90 days, but you now get MMX free for a lifetime. So you will have also have access to our Mindset Master educators to help you um, in the mindset space, in the entrepreneur space, and things of that nature, all right? If you guys want to be able to meet any of our educators live here in I Am Master Academy, or if you want to be able to come out, mix and mingle with some of your fellow peers, um, each year we host two, uh, each year we host two conferences in the U.S., and in Europe, um, the, these are three-day um, education exhibitions where we have thousands of our members come together and you guys are able to get three days of live education, all right? The next live seminar that we are having, the next live expo exposition, pardon me, that we are having is going to be out in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. And then if you are here in the States, the next one is going to be at in Orlando, Florida. So in order to get access to these, you want to go ahead and get some early bird pricing for I am Rotterdam currently, or you want to go ahead and get your I am Orlando tickets. You can do that by simply going to I am Academy um, dot events where you'll be brought to this website page and you can click on learn more or click on Orlando and then you'll get all the details and all the information for these specific events that are coming up. They will both be in March in the upcoming year. So plenty of time to pack, plenty of time to save, plenty of time to get ready to explore um, and be able to be a part of our exhibition. All righty. Now, as we get ready to officially wrap this thing up, pardon me. Okay. Uh, we're all over the place here. Okay. So, 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 so sorry. All right, so we are officially going to be wrapping up the final day for the 25 days of giving week two. We will be back here next Sunday. Okay, so come back here next Sunday. And as we come back next Sunday, we're going to have a whole brand new lineup of new educators. And we're going to be getting back into the trading space. Next week, you'll be able to hear from Chairman Wanda and Randy Webb on December 11th, which is Sunday. You'll be hearing from Dr. Spillers, learning about colors on Monday. You'll be learning about uh, time-based trading and trend trap with AWOL on Tuesday. On Wednesday, you will be learning more about the Bitcoin market directly. Um, first one was alt-fi. Second one was NFTs. 
and Web3. This one's going to be pure Bitcoin with Mr. Nick Gomez. And then immediately after that, we're going to have um, some, one of our most certified traders here, Ms. Carolyn Bolden, and also Ms. Tammy Marshall for one of our newest SFX packages. So you guys are in for an incredible week. Make sure you show up next week. Invite your friends, invite your family, learn the strategies, learn the education because they're here for you. Again, we want to thank you guys so much for tuning into the 25 Days of Giving. We want to wish you guys a phenomenal, a phenomenal weekend and also have a great